watch out for me, I'm about to glow. We about to get the whole nine, the whole nine. We just landed on a gold mine. We the new Abu Dhabi, this is our time. Yes, yes, y'all. It's crunch time. Hey, y'all. Hey. hey, it's crunch time, baby. So uh, let's get into these other issues that we got going up. There's a team out here that's supposed to be way up there, but they coming on down. They uh, they living like mortals right now. And that's Cleveland, Cleveland Cavaliers, with the best player in the world on their team, LeBron James. What's going on, man? I mean, you supposed to be you supposed to be Cleveland. You supposed to be the GM. You supposed to be the coach. You supposed to be the team. <laughs> It ain't working out, man. I, I had faith in you. I mean, I still got faith in you, but I just don't know what's going on with your team. You got a whole bunch of crybabies, apparently. I mean, everybody's talking about they should be starting. And they used to do this, and now, you know, they have this role. It's, it's up in the air right now where your fate is, and I'm really concerned that you guys are not going to be in the finals. I'm, I'm getting worried. I, I need you guys to get it together because I had you guys, you know, there going against the Warriors for the fourth time. And it's looking like somebody else in the East is about to take it. Well, I mean, honestly, Cleveland's issues, they didn't just start this season, you know. They started, you know, last season, you know. After they capped off their 2016 NBA championship run, you know, and returning, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of discussions on where certain players would go or how contracts... How contracts would be and stuff like that mm -hmm. and so when you have to deal with all that you know going through an NBA season with LeBron of course he's a he's the headline you know you of, him being, a lot of, attention. of him being a free agent you know mm -hmm. within a year or two from then you know everybody's still talking about it what are you gonna do awesome. this and that you know then you got other players like Kyrie Kevin Love you know still on contract and they have X amount of years left so do they want their player option so really their issues came you know further much further than this now but I would say what their issue is, is a lack of trusting each other. And I think when they're out there on the court, you know, every, it's every man by himself pretty much. It's a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. It's a lot of not moving without the ball. A lot of watching the ball. A lot of watching, you know, defender. It's just a lot of pretty much bad basketball. Though. So it's a lot of bad basketball. And it's worse than what we're seeing on the court. I think there's a lot that has to do with in the locker room. I think the players don't trust each other. Well, I mean, I think, it's, a, it's a whole lot of brand new players coming together. But I know? think they don't like each other. I the think chemistry's not there. The, chem the chemistry's not there. But look, put it like this. I can say this. Golden State, when they lost, what they do? They shot that thing up. They brought in some more pieces. What happened? And they brought in better players than what Cleveland yeah, brought see, in. Yeah, but Golden State, Golden State has a different chemistry, a different brotherhood that well, goes yeah, on yeah. with them. And see, know? that's another thing. Cleveland, they don't love each other, and it's showing, like, think about it. Isaiah Thomas, after every game, he's keeping it real. Yeah, Saying but, how that, people but the talk thing about is, each other, how he, just started, he just started playing. He came in, what, but, a few weeks but ago? But if he's telling you what's going on in the Cavs locker room, just imagine what's been going on before this point. Yeah, this mean, ain't the first shoot. time Cleveland's been losing or they've been in the slump to where they possibly won't go to the finals or we thought that. And this hasn't been the first time where LeBron's been LeBron's team's been in the news and they may get blown up or something like that or make yeah. they, make moves. So think about it like this. Why do you think Kyrie's gone? Kyrie probably saw some of this that was about to happen. Yeah, but he, he also wanted to be the man. That's true, but he also yeah. saw a lot of this probably about to blow up. Hey, honestly, I think the whole chemistry within the team and the whole organization is what's messing everything up. I mean, from the top to the bottom. You go from the owner, Dan Gilbert, to the GM, who ain't really G the GM because nobody knows who he is. It's pretty much Dan Gilbert. And so he's trying to make all these moves, and then he's not consulting his best player in but LeBron they James. They can't consult him because they don't even know if he's even going to stay. He's As, saying he's not going to stay long term. So it's like, how could you consult him? If you want him to stay, you have to consult him. You got to include him in your future talks if you want him to be a part of your future. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's over here getting mad because he wants to know what's going on and what you're going to do and what moves you're making. My thing is, you guys, if I was the GM, I can't worry about what he's saying and thinking because put it like this: I just put this team together based off of who you wanted. And, I mean, we're not doing good. This is the exact team you wanted. You wanted your best friend, you Dwayne Wade. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't want Isaiah Thomas, but you were sure happy when we got him and Jay Crowder, right. you know? And you weren't really too opposed to when we traded, traded Kyrie. You're like, well, 
the kid had to do what he had to do. So, I mean, they brought in pieces from day one that you've wanted with Kevin Love, you know, not letting Andrew Wiggins play for us. So, it's like, it's a lot of things that they've done for LeBron, and you can't just be like, oh, we need to do this for LeBron, like, and he's not going to commit to you uh, long term. I believe that Isaiah Thomas needs to be more included in the offense because he's a 30-point scorer. Per game. They're trying to. He's missing a lot, though. He's shooting like 2 of 12, committing multiple <clears throat> 5 plus turnovers and this and hey, that. He's a liability. But he's a liability on defense. It's so he's much. He's always been a liability on defense. But the eight teams are exposing it because the Cavaliers are a liability. So they're going at I your know. main target. That's it. Everybody is a liability. Defensively, we're, we're not there. We're not, we're not together on that end. And to be a good defensive team, you got to be. You got to be together. You can't leave anybody on islands. You got to be always be in help position, and take away what they like to do. And we didn't do that at all. We didn't do that. Probably not one possession tonight. Um, and we got to go back to the drawing board on that end. Um, as players, we got to take pride in defense. We got to take pride in getting stops as a group collectively. It's not no individual, not not an individual thing. We got to get better defensively as a group from the first guy to the last guy on this team. And I think if we do that, we're, we're going to be all right. Because offensively, we we got what it takes to be a really good team. We just have to fix that. In Boston, we were just a better defensive team. We played a lot harder. And I, we have the guys to do that on this team. We just got to do it. We got to really lock in on that end, really trust each other on that end. And I think that's the biggest thing on defense is trusting the next guy got your back. And then that guy who helps, trusting that, that next guy after that has your back in. I think on that end right now, we don't trust each other. And that has to change. We shouldn't know this much, honestly. I feel like they let out too much of their locker room talk to the media. That may be their number one problem. It's not keeping it in-house, letting it get to the media. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't know that LeBron said that he wouldn't commit to you guys long term. We shouldn't see these Isaiah Thomas interviews where he's bashing you guys blatantly right after the game we're not together we're not together on both ends i mean it's a lot of one-on-one -on, -one on the offensive end maybe because we don't trust each other and then on the defensive end it's the same thing guys are put on islands and there's no trust so i mean if you don't trust something then you're not i i don't know i mean but i think it's it has a lot to do with trust on both ends um our offense has, has to be way better. We have to learn to, to execute, um, get the ball moving side to side. But it starts on the defensive end, and it's all everybody for themselves on that end. And that's not, that's not how a good defensive team is supposed to be. Ain't hey, nothing but trauma over there. It's a lot of stuff that we shouldn't know about mm -hmm. the organization, especially because the high pedestal that they're on because of LeBron James. But we do know it. And the media stirs it up, and it gets in their heads. And that's all we're talking about it today, because Cleveland, they got a, they got more issues than the Browns. Hey, but, <laughs> but I mean, honestly, I think that in the end, Cleveland will get it together. I mean, they have the best play in the world, and I believe everybody will be healthy towards the end, and they'll figure it out. I mean, they've been to the finals, you know, what, three years in a row? Yeah, so, yeah. I think they'll get there, but right now, and then when the drama and the media is latching on. You know, staying on the basketball topic, you know, and speaking of big names out here, as we shift our focus into the collegiate level, this season has been up and down, you know, with a lot of small school teams emerging in the top 25, as well as a lot of commonly known schools that are usually like in the top 5, top 10, slipping out of the top 25 and having a very inconsistent season. And so, I'm here to ask you, Zell. What do you think is up with the big name schools this year? Like, honestly, what's going on with them? You know what? I really believe it comes down to recruiting, and a lot of players, a lot of good players coming out of high school, are staying home. I mean, like you see Trey Young. You know, he stayed home. Um, Michael Porter. Michael Porter. Yeah, Michael Porter stayed home. A lot of these big name players aren't necessarily feeling that they need to go to these big-time schools. I mean, you know, you're going to get the, the top recruits going to Duke, and you're going to get top recruits going to Kentucky and, you know, teams like that. But, honestly, a lot of these players that would have gone to Kentucky or, or so, they're staying home and they're going to wherever they want to go because it's a one-and-done league now. Well, do you know what also I think is a factor? I think a lot of the top-ranked players 
aren't going to the top ranked schools. Right. Just like how you basically just <clears throat> piggyback off what you just said. Like, for example, think about Michael Porter. He was coming out of Washington. He was you know, number one, you know, recruiting the whole mm -hmm. nation. Yeah. And he chose to go back home to his hometown in Missouri. Mm -hmm. Whereas if he was number one in the nation, he had offers from Kentucky, Carolina, Duke, etc. Right. And he had he a lot of more. He could have went anywhere. And so for like a lot of these players, you know, they're just going where they're most comfortable. They're kind of not thinking about the big name schools. Like if you think about it, Kentucky, they weren't in the top five for recruiting last year, which would probably be a reason why they're not ranked in the top 25 this season thus far. So it's like a lot of teams, they didn't do a great job at recruiting in my opinion. And a lot of big names have gone to different schools that you would that you wouldn't think they would go to, but they've gone to because they adapt well. As if it's the environment, the schooling, right. the coaching, the relationships they have with the players, as well as like their parents, like whatever it could be, it's more than just seeing like you know the big buck and just going to this one and done school. Like that's not really working anymore. I mean, and honestly, you can go to pretty much any school and be a one and done player if you're that good. Look at Markel yeah. Fultz. You know, his team didn't even go to the tournament, and he ended up being the number one pick in the draft. Exactly, that says a lot. Yeah, that that I think that right there changed a lot of these kids' decisions on where they need to go because as long as you put up numbers, look at Trey Young. He's over at Oklahoma shooting the ball every time he gets it. So, I mean, all you got to do is come up, put up numbers, you yeah. know, play your game, and you're going to get noticed. Yeah, and I think a lot of these big schools, I think they're banking on kind of their, their upperclassmen. Like, if you think about it, we could talk about North Carolina. North Carolina, they were, they're were they the defending national champions, right? Who did we have come in from recruiting class? We didn't have really anybody, honestly, you know? Right. We're just banking on, you know, Joel Berry to come back and perform how he did, you know, and sure. other key players that we had on us. But <clears throat> these aren't the players that are going to get you to... That's what I'm saying. Time. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of other schools it's that these are... Freshmen. These, these, fre these freshmen. These freshmen. These freshmen and these sophomores. Yeah, and I mean, Duke... Duke gets these top players every year, and you see they just got Zion Williamson. Yeah, so that they, should be they big get, next year. Yeah, they get top players every year, and you see uh, Marvin Bagley going to work over there. And, going to work. Yeah, they're going to get those top players, but... But right now, the little schools have more heart, you yeah. know? You think about it, Rhode Island, they're in there. At St. Mary's is in the top 25, San Diego State, you know? Shout mm -hmm. out Kawhi. So it's like... <laughs> You know, it's like a lot of little, a lot of smaller schools. They're coming up, and they're being more recognized, or they're playing better, I should say. Yeah, they're playing so, better. They're playing better. I mean, and Duke. Ooh, whenever I watch them, I like Marvin Bagley's toughness, but I always see them as soft. You yeah, know, and that's why they get yeah. beat by these by these schools that they shouldn't get beat by. Yeah, they're charming. They're charming for sure. They're charming for <laughs> sure. Hey, man, soft as a baby's ass. I don't know what's going on, but. I feel like when the tournament comes around, the smaller schools where they have a one or two, you know, nice freshmen, they're going to make some noise, you know. They're gonna, yeah, for sure. They're going to make some noise. And I feel like the big name schools, they're going to be put out because they're inconsistency. You can't be inconsistent in the tournament. You got to have six straight, almost flawless games. You can't have unnecessary turnovers. You can't be lost on defense. You have to know the offense, know the plays for the game, everything. And I feel like a lot of these schools that I've seen, at least the big name schools are came in ranks top five, this and that. They're not playing up to par of to what they were expected to do. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's still two more two, yeah, <clears throat> two more you, months you never left. Know. So yeah, you never they, know. They can get it together. But Kentucky is falling, UNC is falling, and teams like Cincinnati and Purdue are jumping up. It'll be an exciting finish. Yeah, it'll be good to see. It's it's nice to see the pecking order kind of. Switching up and new teams taking over. Right? It's difficult seeing like story like like powerhouses not not play up to their expectations. So. Yeah. Speaking on expectations, teams shopping everybody because they have to get rid of some of their contracts because they're looking forward to you know this year's free agency as well as next year's free and agency. LeBron drama. Not not even just because of LeBron, but just in general, you want to have cap space for multiple players that are going to be free agents. Yeah. The smaller ones as well as the big name ones because you don't know who certain teams want to sign. So, for example, the Clippers, they got rid of a big contract off their books. Huge They got contract. rid of a max contract. So, what can they do in the free agency? Sign another max deal. Yeah, but it looks like they're racing towards the bottom trying to get a top draft pick. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, that, like you know, that's just what some teams are doing, though. Some teams are tanking. Mm -hmm. Some teams are getting rid of 
get rid of contracts or cap space. Some teams are getting rid of players that they know aren't fully committed or that probably won't won't come back or for a player option. A lot of teams are really putting people on the trade block um, just to get a, a better position in the playoffs. I, I think it's that, and I think sometimes it's eye-openers because, honestly, I think the Kimba Walker and um, Dwight Howard, how they were in trade rumors, you know, in December going into January, they their numbers have skyrocketed since then, since January 1st. Mm -hmm. And he haven't heard a single lick of their in serious talks with anybody since then, since mm -hmm. December, honestly. So it's like I think some teams, they kind of do it to see how some players will respond as well as some teams. And I think that the Charlotte Hornets, at least those two players, they've responded pretty well. Well, shoot. Uh, the Lakers put out, you know, they put out some names. Jordan Clarkson. And, and we've been doing Randall. good. They, they shifted yeah. their uh, focus over to the 2019 yeah, season. That's the perfect example. Some teams just do it just to see what's going to happen. Like, if you play worse, why wouldn't we trade you? We already said the rumors out there. That's true. I mean, but you have to get that offer to get something back. It's gonna be but do you think GMs honestly throw it out there if they don't think they're going to get something in return? Oh, they're hoping for something. But I'm saying, do you think they don't have something lined up to where they could probably oh, get something sure. in return? Those GMs are like this. They yeah. talk to each other all the they time. They have stuff lined up all the time when they say. Like, oh, when they, they say that you're on the trade block, little do you know, you're probably that close to being you traded. You almost got traded. You It might have got declined. You may have got traded three times and it got declined. They said, all right. oh, he, he on the block. He got yeah, go. he is, he's on the block. He's on the block. But really, he's been traded like three times and got we declined. Don't, we don't trade him in the 2K my career so many times. You don't even know. <laughs> Every trade. Hey, he over here on the court hooping. Right. He's so, playing. So he think. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a cold business out here, this NBA, man. Yeah. From the inside to the outside, these GMs to the players on the court, not knowing, i.e. Blake Griffin finding out on Twitter that he was traded. It's crazy, right? It's a crazy business. Hey, right? sports owners, it's not really too much loyalty in the game. Nah, especially not now, especially when players don't have loyalty. But then coaches didn't have them either because trades always started before free agency. Oh, that's for sure. You know, these, trades players, are these players just catching on. They, they figure... Now I gotta be about my money. Yeah, because I could be gone. Play Griffin. Facts. Facts. <laughs> and look at Detroit climbing too. Show him up, Blake. <laughs> Bang on him! <laughs> <laughs> As we come to a close, we wanna say thank you for tuning in and make sure you subscribe us on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe us, leave us some feedback. You know, hit us with some comments, hit us with some topics that you wanna see. And we'll touch on those because we want to know what you, what you like to see. And so we'll give you what you want. And we'll give you that high five. We're going to give you that knowledge. And we're going to give you the real. We're going to give you the real. So tune in, man. Tune in because we'll be back. No doubt about that. We out. Peace.